Okay, now we're going to look at some of the organic molecules that we've examined this year. Now, we looked at nucleic acids, which are, you like know, chutney? Nucleic acids are the monomers which put when polymer, polymerized together form DNA, but we won't worry too much about that right now. Now, remember we looked at proteins. Proteins are polymers which are built up of what type of monomer? Uh, amino acids. Okay, now, egg white is actually very rich in protein, which are polymers of amino acids. Egg white is very rich in protein. Now, I haven't built a structure of an amino acid, but you will recall it had a lot of carbons, hydrogens, oxygens, and even nitrogen. Now, protein is okay. It's certainly needed to build tissues in our bodies, but it's not the greatest source of energy, okay? Because you know when we when our body burns this for fuel, as you'll see, it doesn't burn. Fail. Okay, we'll just tip that out. Now the next type of organic molecule we looked at were carbohydrates. Now have a look at have a look at this. This is a molecule of glucose. This is a monomer. Now once you stick a whole bunch of these monomers together to form big chains. You form starch, okay? That's the polymer. If you polymerize these together, a whole bunch of glucose molecules put together form starch. Starch, there's a lot of starch in bread. Look at that. Okay, now our body prefers this as fuel because it can break down the starch into its monomeric form, glucose, which floats around our bloodstream to give us energy. Now, our body likes to use it as energy, but it's not the most efficient form of energy. Thanks for leaving all the burnt matches behind. How many more matches play? Ah, the lighter that'll do. Good. Now, as we can see, yeah, burn. See, it's not really, I mean, sure, it provides a bit of energy to our body, but like, it's not the most dense form of energy. Why? Well, because of all the oxygen molecules trying to get in the way a bit. Now, this is organic. Anything that's carbon-based, see the carbon skeleton? Carbon forms the backbone of it. Anything that's carbon-based is organic. But then we looked at a whole bunch of molecules we call hydrocarbons. For example, have a look at this. This is a form of hydrocarbon. This is a fatty acid called stearic acid, which is very rich in foods like oil. Also rich in certain fatty meats and chocolate. Now it has a little bit of oxygen, it has an acid group up the end, so it's not an entirely pure hydrocarbon. If we put this in water, this part would tend to uh, be dissolved in the water. And what happens is the hydrocarbon part tends to float on top, for example, oil. Now, what happens when we burn oil? I'm going to put my safety goggles on, just to be sure. Now, where's the light? Now, I'm not too sure about this. It's pro. E okay, this is olive oil, which has a few of the um, more unsaturated versions in it. Probably not. If you had pure stearic acid, that would probably burn. But the thing to remember about hydrocarbons are they generally tend to float on top of water. See, look what happens. When we add water to oil, I don't know if you can see that. See how the oil floats on top. Why? Because hydrocarbons aren't water soluble. Now, these molecules right now will be arranged so that the oxygen parts are floating, floating down. They will be dissolved in the water, but the high to long chains of hydrogen and carbon will not be, and these burn very good. So fat to our body produces, provides us with a lot more energy, which is why if we have too much fat, it's a lot easier to put on weight because it's extra energy, okay? Now it's an organic molecule. It's also generally called a hydrocarbon because of all the long chains of hydrogen and carbon, and it's in food, it provides a lot of energy. Now let's have a look at some of the hydrocarbons that we looked at with fossil fuels. Well, this is coal. Inside of coal is basically just atoms of carbon stuck together. Now we wouldn't call that hydrocarbon, because they're not molecules, they're just atoms of carbon stuck together, we don't have a lot of hydrogen. We burn that, it will produce a lot of energy, but not a hydrocarbon as such. Gas. Now this is a can which contains, well let's say it contains methane gas, it actually contains butane, which has one, one extra carbon, but we'll say it contains methane. Natural gas occurs in certain pockets under the earth, and it floats up to the top of the water, and it gets trapped under certain landforms, and certain folds and faults underneath the earth. Now this is a hydrocarbon because all it contains is hydrogen and carbon. Produces a lot of energy, very burnable. Um, uh, okay, let's just, let's just test. I mean, theoretically, 
it should burn. It should produce a lot of energy because it's a pure hydrocarbon. It says flammable there, but of course, you know, there's only one way to find out. And, uh, oh dear. Oh dear. This probably isn't the safest experiment to do with my bare hands. Probably not safe. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna do this because you know what it looks like when burn when, when gas burns, so yeah, we're not gonna do that with my bare hands holding onto it because I'm gonna burn myself. Now the other type of fossil fuel we looked at, okay? Other than natural gas and coal, the other type of fossil fuel which is a hydrocarbon is oil, okay, crude oil. Crude oil is a liquid form of hydrocarbon and there are various types of hydrocarbons. What I'm showing here is octane. This is generally the type of hydrocarbon you're gonna find in your petrol, in your fuel tank. Okay, octane, a lot of compressed energy. That energy is stored within those chemical bonds between the carbon and, and, uh, and the hydrogens, okay, and the hydrocarbons. Now, a lot of energy in this stuff. Uh, this is oil, I've actually mixed it with a bit of Petrol, okay, now things like motor oil, petrol, diesel, kerosene, these are all extracts of crude oil, petroleum, okay. This is obviously not the raw form that's coming out of the ground, this is an extracted form. So they extract different parts out of the crude oil to make this stuff. Oh dear. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is going to burn. Just, obviously there's only, as I always say, one way to find out, so, um, uh, oh dear. How about we just minimise the amount that we have? Tip most of it down the sink. I'm just going to see what happens now. Just to prove that this isn't really, these hydrocarbons are an excellent source of energy. Safety glasses on. Uh huh. That's uh, not going to work. Just set by to a match because we don't have any live matches left. And Woomcha! Ah! You see, crude oil is an excellent source of chemical energy, which you can see is combusting right now. And I better put that, I just realised that's glass. That's gonna explode. Yes, I'm gonna uh, extinguish this before it explodes. Uh oh. I should have checked this fire extinguisher works, this doesn't work. It's not very good. Okay, we're going to have to extinguish. Oh, uh, water is not the best way to put out oil. Oh dear, oh dear, oh this is bad. Oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Let's oh, just let it burn out. Uh, it's going to explode. The glass is going to explode. Okay. Okay. Hang on. Stay there. Just stay there. Pause it. Pause it. Pause it. Pause it. Probably you should have checked that the fire extinguisher worked first. Oh. Huh. See, when, when, when flames don't have oxygen, they don't burn anymore because they need oxygen. Ooh. Okay, yes, well, uh, petroleum and it's all its octane molecule hydrocarbons is a very good source of energy when it combusts and it produces energy to fuel our cars. Oh, although some people's cars, such as mine, can also run on natural gas. So you have this little button in the car and you press it and it switches back between gas and petrol. Okay, well, I think for now that concludes this demonstration. Back to school.